It's a strange, well, it's a strange ten days, isn't it? It's something that uh, most of us have had no experience of, and uh, those of us who have will have been very young when uh, we were in a position like uh, this before. But I'll say what I say at the beginning of almost every funeral I take, that today is about saying farewell. It's about saying goodbye, and we join with all those collectively across the nation and through the Commonwealth who are saying farewell to our late Queen. It's about each one of us coming aware of what her passing means to us. And that may be as someone who has been with us all our life or the, uh, the vast majority of our life and has really become part of the fabric of our lives. But it may also trigger other memories you've had of people that you have lost and become each one of us aware of what our passing means to us in different ways. And we come to support one another. But above all, let us come and celebrate. I always say at the beginning of funerals, let us celebrate a life well lived. And of course, that's a subjective um, judgment as you look at people's lives. But I think we can all agree with the Queen through her 96 years. She's had her ups and downs, as all of us do. But I think we can look back and say that it was a life well lived. And we come and celebrate and we come and give thanks. And above all, we come and give thanks for her faith. The faith that was the anchor of her life. Her faith in Jesus that sees us not just through this life, but our living hope for a life to come. And so we continue as we sing the hymn, Jesus Christ, our living hope.
in our prayers of thanksgiving and celebration for the Queen's life. We use words prepared by the Methodist Church. But uh, first, a prayer from the communion service. God's grace and peace are with us. Let our hearts be filled with joy. God of mercy, your love for us is strong, but our love for you is weak. You call us to follow Jesus, but we are slow to obey. You care for all that you have made, but we ignore the needs of others and misuse your creation. We are sorry for our sins. Forgive us and help us to please you by the way we live. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and forgives our sins through Jesus. Amen. Beloved in Christ, at this time of death and mourning, we are confident that God is with us. Let us pray in silence as we remember God's servant Elizabeth, our late sovereign lady and queen. Gracious God, your love for your children is eternal. Neither life nor death can separate those who trust in you. Unite us to yourself that together with your servant Elizabeth, we may rejoice in your light and peace. Through Jesus Christ who died and rose again for us. Amen. And now we have two short readings, one from the book of Psalms and the other from the book of Revelation. The reading is Psalm 27, verses 1, 4 to 5, 7 to 9, and 13 to 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. The reading is taken from Revelation 21, verses 22 to 26, and chapter 22, 3b to 5. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. 
The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign for ever and ever. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Let us pray. Crucified Saviour, you save us from the fear of death. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Gentle Shepherd, you bring rest to our souls. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lamb of God, you grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Let us give thanks for the victory of Christ over death. Glory and thanks be given to you, almighty God, our Father, because in your great love for the world, you gave your Son to be our Saviour, He lived our life, bore our griefs, and died our death upon the cross. We thank you that you have brought him back from death with power and great glory, that he has conquered sin and death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. Let us give thanks for the noble life and witness of our late Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth. Eternal God, we praise you for your goodness and mercy that followed your servant Elizabeth all the days of her life and for her faithfulness in the tasks to which you called her. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that for your loving servant the tribulations of this world are over and death is past. And we pray that you will bring us with her to the joy of your perfect kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us ask for God's blessing in our time of mourning and grief. God of comfort and grace, Draw near to all who mourn the passing of your servant, Elizabeth, our Queen, and grant to her successor, Charles, and all the royal family, the gift of your peace and the strength of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us ask for God's guidance in our future together. Grant us, O God, in all our duties your help, in all our perplexities your guidance, in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing the hymn, Lord for the years, your love has kept and guided.
you'll no doubt appreciate that this week has been one of those weeks when you're prepared to lead worship on a Sunday morning, you've got everything sorted out, you know exactly what you're going to say, and then in a moment everything changes. So it was this week with the Pasch of Queen Elizabeth, and it's quite right that in churches all across this country the gospel will be illuminated through the lens of her life and death. I don't know whoever want to lose sight entirely of what I'd previously prepared to pay because it is relevant to uh, what we're talking about this morning. My text was going to be from Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And I was going to illustrate it by reference to only fools and horses and uh, that classic scene that everyone seems to remem- remember whether they watch the show or, uh, or not in the pub, which I couldn't remember the name of. I was hoping I might look it up and it would be something like the Royal Oak that would be even more relevant, but it was the nag's head. Um, But, of course, you've got Del Trotter standing there with his back to the the bar, and he goes back to uh, lean on it, unaware that uh, since he last looked at it, the barman has come out to do his business and raised a hinged uh, section. And with perfect comic timing, David Jason falls through the empty space, through the hole that is there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Our own understanding and the resources that we have are not to be underestimated. They are, of course, gifts given to us by God. So they're not bad things. It's just that they are incomplete things. They come with their holes. They are not to be relied upon completely for leaning. The Queen, of course, had as much understanding as she wanted. She had the best minds to advise her. She had all the resources available to her that anyone could have. But she knew that beyond all of this, She needed to look to God. Going back to her Christmas message from 2002, she broadcast these words to the world. I know just how much I rely on my own faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view to give of my best in all that the day brings and to put my trust in God. Like others of you who draw inspiration from your own faith, I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. Beginning each day by trying to do your best and looking to God in trust. And when it says trust in God with all your heart, What does it mean? Well, when we, and you've probably heard me say this before, when we think of the heart, we might think of something that pumps blood around the body, but beyond that, symbolically, it kind of represents love, don't you? How many times do you see, I love New York, or I love Bista, and there's a heart in the, uh, the middle. It represents for us the emotions but for the, uh, in the ancient Jewish uh, thinking, it didn't represent the emotions. That was further down in the bowels. It represented the mind. And so another way of putting this is decide in your mind that you are going to trust in God. Just as the Queen said at the beginning of each uh, day. And then as an act of will, persevere with that. How much does the world need to know that our own understanding comes with holes in it? What do we pray at the end of uh, the section of prayers that we had earlier on? Grant us, O God, in all our duties your help, in all our perplexity your guidance, in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Just seems to be a world at the moment that is full of perplexities, full of dangers, full of sorrows. And just to, just to underline that, we have a new monarch coming to the throne and a new prime minister uh, as well. 
You could say we're in a bit of a mess, couldn't you? I mean, that's no, that's no reflection on the new monarch and the new prime minister, I stress very, very quickly. But we could do with continuity with the old when you're going through troubled times, couldn't you? In a, in a Christmas message, the Queen described the, um, or the, the Queen spoke of being conscious of the trials and sorrows that so many people are suffering, both in this country and around the world. My heart, she says, goes out to those whose lives have been blighted by war, terrorism, famine, natural disaster, or economic hardship. Seems to sum it all up, doesn't it? But when were those words spoken? It was the Annus Horribilis year, 1992. 30, it's depressing, isn't it, that 30 years on, the same words could be used to describe the world we live in as if nothing has changed in that time. And that's what happens when we rely on our own understanding. It's not bad for getting the world through most of the time, but it does come with holes in it, like the bar in the nag's head. Instead, we too need to heed the advice of the proverb. Lean not on your own understanding but trust in the Lord with all your heart. And our next hymn enables us to come before God on behalf of our own, uh, on behalf of ourselves to acknowledge that too often we do foolishly over-rely on our own understanding and resources and we don't trust in God with all our heart but also enables us to come before God and acknowledge that on behalf of a broken world. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways.
It was Thursday tea time that the news broke of the death of Queen Elizabeth. And I've been looking forward to watching West Ham play in a European match that uh, evening. The match did actually go ahead, unlike the matches over this uh, weekend. Although, of course, its significance, its significance, if not paling into complete insignificance, certainly paled an awful lot. There was a minute's silence before the game, except there wasn't a minute's silence. Instead, we got respectful, enthusiastic applause and a rendition of the national anthem. Centre victorious, we heard, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save the Queen spontaneously from those who were there. Possibly, I thought, the last time those words will be sung for quite a while, Because, and it will be a struggle, we've got to get used to singing God Save the King now, haven't we? After having sung God Save the Queen all my life. Long to reign over us. She certainly did that. 70 years and 214 days. The second longest reigning monarch in recorded history. Second only to Louis XIV of uh, France although he did have the advantage of ascending to the throne when he was a child of just four years of age. How about the victorious, happy and glorious bits? Of course, the goalposts have moved since those words were originally written. Whatever victorious and glorious might mean today, it's not about being a military leader riding out at the head of your army or about expanding your empire. The role for Queen Elizabeth was of being a ceremonial figurehead. And in that role, she excelled as monarch of our nation, as head of the Commonwealth, as leader of the Church of England. She acted faithfully and wisely. And her yardsticks in terms of victorious and glorious living was summed up once again in those words that I read from the 2002 Christmas broadcast. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings and to put my trust in God. By those yardsticks, her reign, her life, was victorious and glorious. And we hope happy as well. And I suspect she would have echoed the words of Paul when he spoke about not himself, but Jesus whom he followed. When he spoke about being a servant of Jesus Christ, the servant king. Whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. I suspect that football fans are not noted for making theological points. But as they sang God Save the Queen in tribute to a monarch who was now dead, part of me did wonder whether any of them realised the significance of what they were singing. That after we die, if we want, in Paul's words, to attain to the resurrection from the dead, if we want our life to go on through eternity, then our salvation truly is in the hands of God and God alone. God save the Queen. I remember a preacher speaking about a very wealthy person who had recently died at that time. He spoke about the person's will and what they had left, and then commented that they had left exactly what he himself was going to leave, which left us sort of puzzling for a moment, thinking, is he a lot richer than he looks, or was it that the person who's died was a lot poorer than we'd been led to believe, or maybe had given all their money away on their deathbed? Then, of course, came the punchline that cleared it all up, that both of them had left everything. Whatever resources we might have in this life, we can't take with us. 
They cease to be any use to us when we die. We can have huge resources of wisdom and understanding, piles of money in the bank, a wonderful reputation with all and sundry for the good charitable things that we do. We can have prodigious strength of body and mind. All are useless to us when we die. That's why Paul spoke about counting all his gains loss compared to knowing Jesus and attaining to the resurrection of the dead through him. I mentioned earlier on that her faith in Jesus was the anchor by which the Queen lived her life. Not my words, but hers from the Christmas broadcast of 2014. For me, the life of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, whose birth we celebrate today, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life. And that took me back to another hymn that we're not going to sing today. Um, I mentioned the Servant King earlier on, and some of you might have thought, oh, we're going to sing the Servant King. No, we're not. Neither are we going to sing, um, Will Your Anchor Hold? But thinking about anchors led me in that direction. And of course, there is a twofold challenge in the words of that hymn. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? And will your anchor hold in the floods of death? And the answer summed up in the chorus. We have, and I'm not going to sing it for you. We have an anchor that keeps the soul, soul steadfast. Join in with me if you, uh, if you remember these words and can recite them off by heart. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Jesus was the anchor that Queen Elizabeth looked to through the storms of life over 96 long years. And he is the anchor through whom she and all of us, all of Christ's disciples, will come through the floods of death as well. So let's sing, In Christ alone my hope is found.
as we come before God with our prayers of intercession, we do so with the communion table opening open, the bread and the wine, representing the brokenness of Jesus on the cross, dying our death there in order that we might share in his resurrection life. But the brokenness of Jesus is necessary because of the brokenness of our world. He came to, in his words, enter into a new covenant between God and the world. And so as we pray, we immerse ourselves in the brokenness of this world. And we bring it before God. So let us pray. Lord God, at this time of mourning, we bring before you all those who are grieving. In particular, we pray for those members of the royal family and those who were close to our late Queen. But also, those of us for whom her death reopens wounds from the past and those who are grieving for people that they have lost to in the very recent past. We bring them before you in the stillness. And Lord, we bring before you the the newness of life. We pray for a new king, for a new prime minister. And for all those who are embarking on new roles at this time, particularly thinking of Methodist ministers settling into new churches as well. We pray that all those who are beginning anew may look to you and to you uh, and trust in you and not rely purely on their own understanding. We pray too for those who are struggling with their health at the moment, with illness, with sickness, those who are near to death themselves. And as we remember them before you, we pray that they may know your arms of love around them and your healing hand upon them. And again, we pray for the perplexities, for the dangers, for the sorrows of the world. And we acknowledge that understanding is good, but it comes with holes. And as we pray for the understanding and the wisdom of leaders everywhere, those who have positions of influence in this world. So we pray that they may not rely on their own understanding, but may be enabled to trust in you. And we pray that for our own lives as well. Lord, we are all over-reliant on our own understanding and our own resources 
but teach us anew what it is to trust in you and not to rely on our own understanding, not to lean upon it. Finally, Lord, we pray for those who have no faith, who have no anchor in their lives to cope with the storms of life and death. We pray for people that we know that they may come to know what faith in you looks like. Lord, let your light shine through us that they may see you reflected in us. And may they come to know the good news which is expressed through the life and the death and the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, who entered into the brokenness of our world to begin its healing. And we long for the day when we will all meet in heaven, when that healing is complete. Lord, we pray it in your name and through your power. Amen. And the bread and the wine at the Lord's table reminds us of that occasion when Jesus met with his friends, with the disciples to celebrate the Passover meal. And in the course of the meal, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, broken for you. When you meet, do this yourselves in memory of me. And that after supper he took one of the cups of wine, blessed it, gave it, to them, gave it to them to drink and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. A new start between God and the world. Do this whenever you meet in memory of me. And so we come together, aware of the brokenness of Jesus, aware of the brokenness in our own lives, aware of the brokenness in our world, but knowing that Jesus is the answer and Jesus is the anchor. The body of Christ, broken for us. and the blood of Christ that was shed for us. Although the bread and the wine come to us, we come to Jesus in taking the bread and the wine at his invitation, looking to him as always to transform our lives. And the bread and the wine will be brought to you if you don't wish to receive the bread or the wine, then just keep your hands down in front of you and whoever is serving will know to pass you by. And just, and we will continue to say this for a while from a COVID security point of view, those who do come and serve will come and hand sanitize before they do um, take the bread and the wine. So you just, well, you just know that that is the case. So let us give thanks and let us receive.
body of Christ broken for us. His blood that was shed for us. Father God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Amen. Before we sing our final hymn, any other notices, anything that we forgot to say earlier on that anyone wants to draw to our attention? We'll take up our offering during the singing of our final hymn, and a reminder as well that if for uh, COVID or whatever reasons you don't want the, um, the offering bag to come um, to you, then just, as, as with the communion, just indicates uh, otherwise, and there will be a a plate out in the uh, porch to put any uh, offerings uh, into if you don't put them into the, uh, the bag. But let's sing the words of our final hymn. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but you are mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me now and evermore.
Lord God, we give to you for out of our resources, but giving back to you what you have given to us as a token. Help us to hold nothing back. Help us to trust in you with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding with its holes. And bless what we have to offer, that it may be a blessing to you and a blessing to others in our broken world. And Lord, we pray it in and through your holy name. Amen. And let's bless one another as we go from here. Let's bless one another in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.